Okay, this is out of a F-350, 2001 F-350. I think um, F-250, F-350 are exactly the same. <clears throat> you can leave all the fuses in, I believe. This, these, I got out already by using a drill. I used a half inch drill to drill this out just down to there. I didn't even go down to the threads or right down to the threads I did. And then I cleaned them up on a grinder. So once I, once I got there, I threaded a screw in there, an, an extra screw that I found, and I pounded them with a hammer. And then I hit them with the grinder so they'd go back in smooth and easy too. So I already did this once, but I didn't like the way I did it, so I'm doing it over, and I think that I can do it better. Before I put it all the way back together, the way it was, um, too much work to take it in and out. I don't want to have to take it out again. So to get this apart, once you get these out, that's the main thing that holds it together, is those bolts. Then there's just some clips right here that come apart like this. So I'm separating and lifting. All right, that is, oh, one more clip, one more clip, seven clips. Okay, all of these will separate out of here. They'll all stay inside, except for maybe one layer. It's been a couple days since I did this, and this is only my second time doing it. I didn't see any videos showing everything you need to know, and that's why I'm making a video. All right, sometimes they'll get hung up like that and you don't want to just rip on it. You want to help it out. They should all come, every plate, if you want to call these plates, every plate, every layer has a, a series of plates and they all need to come with this layer. So there's nothing left here. The next layer has plates also. Now these plates are all numbered. This is the number one. This is 19. Then there's the 20s and the 30s. So this is the first one. And so there's a number on here. This is number 19. It says so right here.
number 19 and here's 18 So 19 must go right here, and there's the number 19 right there. So I see 19 there, I see 19 here, and they'll always go the same right over the top of each other. All right, so that number's there, and that number's there. They're right next to each other. In fact, that was the furthest way I've ever seen it. But there, it was like that far away. And then you can set these in and make sure they're straight. And then they they um, almost clip in. It's like they're, there's a little bit of a heat treatment they do. Maybe like a heat gun or something solder gun type of thing where they melt it in there and I'm just speculating how they do it but we can do it better right and we don't have to do this now but on number one we definitely want to do it now because number one is going to be the first panel this is the first one that we're going to put back together so all the rest you don't even have to worry about getting keeping them in order, although it's kind of nice to keep them in order, so it's easier for you. Now, because like I said, they're all marked. So that's it right there. I'm going to set that aside. That's number two. All the pieces came together with that. Number three, you can see a little bit of corrosion there. Now I soldered it right here. Last time I took it apart, it was a little bit worse corrosion than that. Not too bad, but I just wanted to protect it as much as possible. But I think that what I have planned for this guy, it's not going to need much more protection. I think I got a good idea coming up here. And I'm not going to post it if it's not a good idea. Because why would I do that? I hate it when people waste my time. I'm not going to waste your time. What's going on? This must go like that. It does. So you can see the indents and or look for the numbers. I mean, you don't definitely don't want to separate and get them all mixed up and not look at the numbers and try to put it back together. It's pretty well organized.
Be gentle, but you got to use some pressure. Look inside there and make sure you're not bending anything. But if you do bend it, you can bend it back. It's not the end of the world. Number three. No. One, two, three, four. Man, we're almost done with this already. Oh, and I missed one. Did you see that? And this goes this way. Some of them go up, some of them go down. And when I put it back together, we're going to push it down with the screwdriver and make sure they're all down, jammed in place. All right, so did I say why I'm doing this again, over again? Because when I first did this, I put it back together and I sprayed in a multi purpose. Uh, anti-corrosion lubricant and I didn't like the idea that it could cause some of it to have um, to, to be a conductor that the spray would be a conductor and I could end up with a similar problem. So I want to use a dielectric, something with dielectric. And I noticed that silicone has really good dielectric properties, but I'm going to go with um, dielectric grease. And I've had other things before where I've had to pack it full of grease to make it work and I think that I'm going to do that here I'm going to pack this full of grease So, number five, one more. There's six of them. I'm going to try and get rid of all this um, lubricant. It's not a bad thing. It might have worked. But I just don't want to have to do this again. And the hard part really is putting it in and out of the car. Once you get it out of the car and you break it apart, clean it up, see where you're at. Mine was pretty dirty. It had some water in there still. Mine got water because I power washed my truck. See, now I, got, I have this in there still. And I'm thinking that that could be... Um, an, an electrical connectivity problem so that's why I'm doing this I got water in my truck from power washing it and I pushed some leaves in underneath my door molding and it allowed water to come in and go right on my dash during a rainstorm I think it's happened before I think those leaves have been in there for a while I've power washed the truck a couple times since I've owned it. I've owned it for a long time. It's 2021 right now. I've owned it since 2006. 
I believe. And it's been a really good truck. Not too many miles on it. All right. So I'm going to spray this stuff down with contact cleaner. And it is taking all that residue out. And drying it up really fast. just in case it causes electrical connection. And that's the problem I was having. This is the water was causing electrical connection. So I'm gonna make sure anything, these things are so close together. One goes over the top of the other one and there's hardly any space in between one and two. They're going to be so close together. When you look at at the side, it's just too scary for me. That's it for that can. All right. Just trying to wipe off any residue. I mean, if you wanted to really go crazy with this, I suppose you could throw it all in the dishwasher and really get it clean. But I think this is going to be just fine. I think the other stuff would have worked. But I think that what I'm doing could be future failure prevention.
All right, I think that's good enough. Okay, that's number one. Let's make sure they're all down nice and tight. You definitely want to make sure these are down because look at how close they are together. And that's popped up. This one's down, but this one is up. There it goes. something underneath there to help hold it level. Feels pretty good. All right, I got this stuff at Amazon. And it's actually food grade dielectric grease, anti corrosion connector gel. And that's what we got right here. We got connectors. Whoa, look at that big air pocket in there. Who knew? Well, good thing I got two of them. All right, this is the idea I had when, when I thought about it. Let's just pack this sucker full of grease. The only problem I could see right now is um, some hairs of the brush getting stuck and conducting electricity across some layers or you know some plates. But 
this works. It'd be nice, fast, and easy. And it seems like I'll be able to see that if it does happen. If I lose some hairs off the brush. I mean, how else are you going to put that stuff on, right? It's nice and thick. Because you're not going to interrupt the con connectivity between on the plate itself. You're not going to disturb that. And it should stop all the connectivity between the plates with this. Supposed to. So now it should squish up and squish down a little bit. This is number two. I'm going to blow it off also. To worry about them being tight yet. Because there's not much support in these plates yet. Now, I want them to be in the right place, especially going down and coming back up. So some are coming up, some are going down. So one's going up into two and two's going down into one and, and some of the grease is coming through. So now that it's down, you want to make sure these plates are down and clipped in as best as you can get them. Definitely don't want to have air in between. goes all right look at it oozing out that's the picture I want too much grease dielectric grease and, and they said this is food grade it can touch your drinking water I'm not going to endorse it that. All right, you see how close these are together right here? And if there's water in there, that's just not a good thing. We're going to put more grease along the outside of that. So that was number two. That was the twos. This is the threes. We put a little bit more grease in. And pack it full. This way, there's so much grease, there's no, ro no room for water inside here. And you're not going to see this video if it doesn't work. And it says this stuff won't run 
or drip well I believe them why not right Two, one and two are coming up through three, and three is going down. It's easy, but it's not easy. Just got to be patient. Make sure everything's lined up. Then make sure these are clipped in.